guys, this is Dr. Beck, and this video is on real gases. Before you watch this video, you should already be comfortable with a few things, including kinetic molecular theory of gases and the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. If you're not comfortable with these, please uh, watch my earlier videos to describe this. Uh, I believe it's called Gases 1. In this video, you will learn how to account for ideal gases and identify the conditions that require you to account for those. And uh, we're going to call these real gases. Here we go. Okay, as a reminder, so the kinetic molecular theory says that we view gases as just balls that are knocking around in space. It's a really good model for looking at these things. However, it has a few limitations. One of the assumptions that it makes is that gas molecules have no volume that they take up. And this is a pretty good assumption when things are really far apart. However, when things are closer together, it starts to fall apart. And we think about it, so if we think of the distance between the Earth and the Sun, if we look at the distance between the Earth and the Sun, it doesn't matter if we calculate from the center of the Earth or the surface of the Earth. That distance is so great compared to that, the diameter of the Earth that it doesn't make any difference in the calculations. If we look at the distance from the Moon to the, to the Earth, it now makes a difference. So if we calculate the distance as being from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the Moon, that's a different calculation than going from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. So gases have the same thing, so when they start getting closer together, that, that distance, the volume that they actually take up, starts to make a difference. And the ideal gas law describes how gases behave in the empty space. The second thing that we're going to worry about is that we've viewed these balls floating around, these gases floating around, as not having any interactions with each other. There's no stickiness between these. As they fly around, they bounce off each other. And when things are moving really quickly, this is a reasonable estimate. So imagine that you have two marbles that are coated with Velcro. And if you throw those marbles at each other really fast, they're going to bounce off. The fact that there's Velcro on the surface won't make any difference. And this is what we're going to observe gases when things are moving really quickly. So they have a high velocity, high kinetic energy, and a kinetic molecular theory, theory that says this is the same as a high temperature. So things are moving very quickly at a high temperature. They just bounce right off each other. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit sticky. As we slow things down, as our marbles move more slowly, then if they have Velcro on the surface, that's going to make a difference. And they'll start to stick together. And the effect that we're going to see from this is that when they stick together, the pressure or the amount of times that they collide with the walls of our container becomes less. So sticky molecules that stick together is going to decrease the pressure that we observe and decrease the pressure that we measure inside our chamber. So these are the two things that we're going to account for. So we're going to account for the volume as things become closer together, so high pressure. So as things get closer together under high pressure, we want to account for the volume. And we want to subtract the volume that's going to come from those gas molecules themselves. As we also have things that get stickier, we're going to want to adjust the pressure, and we're going to want to increase the pressure to account for the fact they're sticking together more and not smashing into the size of my container, which is my measurement of pressure. And these are the two things that we're going to adjust. So you may recall the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. What we're going to change that, we're going to look at what's called, called the Van der Waals equation, which takes into account these adjustments for, for pressure and volume for real gases. So the adjustments our adjustments look like this. Here's the equation, the Van der Waals equation. You may notice that the right side of the equation remains unchanged. So we still have a number of moles times my gas constant times the temperature. But you notice on the left side that now we have pressure and volume that need to be adjusted. So the adjustment for pressure takes into account the number of moles, the square of the number of moles times some constant A divided by the square of the volume. So if we have a large volume, they're not going to be, they're not going to be smashing into the, each other very much. They'll be more separated from each other, and our pressure adjustments are going to be smaller. If we have a large number of moles, that means there are, they are likely to be smashing into each other and sticking to each other more. And so this is our stickiness correction. A is just a constant, so it's a constant that's going to depend on the gas itself. For helium, for instance, is a very small number. For something like carbon tetrachloride, it's a very large number. So carbon tetrachloride is very sticky. It tends to stick to itself, and we need to have a much larger adjustment to the pressure. 
our volume adjustment takes into account the size of the particles. If we have a very large volume and a small number of moles, this adjustment is going to be very small. And if we have a small volume and a large number of moles, then the volume of the gas itself is going to take uh, is going to require more more adjustment. There's a little bit simpler adjustment, so volume, we subtract from that number of moles times some constant, and again, that constant is specific for the different gases. For instance, uh, neon has a very small adjustment to be made, it has a very small, uh, ion, it has a very small radius, whereas something like uh, carbon dioxide or carbon tetrachloride has a much larger volume that that gas occupies, and so that needs to be adjusted in the ideal gas. Okay, let's try a little example. So, example, what does what is the effect of water? So, water is a polar molecule. It's pretty sticky. It's got a good velcro on there that uh, it holds it together. And, and uh, if it runs into each other, moving slowly, it will stick pretty pretty well. So, let's see if we can adjust for that. Well, let's look at what the adjustments would be if we have one mole of water at STP. We call STP standard temperature and pressure. So, temperature of uh, zero degrees or 273 Kelvin, and a pressure of 1 atm. You may recall that under normal conditions, the volume of one mole of any gas at STP is going to be 22.4 liters. So we can use this in our equation. And we look on the previous table on the last, uh, last slide, which shows that the adjustment constant for A is going to be 5.46 liters squared atm over mole squared. And for B is going to be 0 0.03405 liters per mole. And these units just make things come out right. So in the end, A is going to be end up in atmospheres, and B is going to end up to be in liters, as A is adjusting pressure and B is adjusting volume. All right, so if we just plug this into our equation, we notice the pressure adjustment is going to be N squared A over V squared. We plug in the values for water, and we end up with an adjustment of 0 0.0109 atm. And our adjustment for volume ends up being 0 0.0305 liters. So at room temperature and room pressure, so these adjustments for a real gas compared to an ideal gas, we start with 1 atm, and we adjust it by about 1%. And our volume of 22.4 liters gets adjusted by 0 0.03 liters so about 30 milliliters for one mole a very small adjustment compared to the 22.4 liters so at at the low pressure and high temperature that uh, we that is room that is our standard conditions in our standard conditions for gases the adjustments for this the ideal gases does not take up very much it does not require very much adjustment and we can skip it so we can estimate that the ideal gas law is a very good estimation for the temperatures and pressures that we live in however if we increase the pressure we force those molecules closer together then we're going to have a larger or we're going to have a smaller volume and that's going to cause us to have a larger correction and as we get to lower temperatures things have a chance to stick together so there will be adjustments there as well Okay, so can you now predict conditions where the ideal gas law will need to be adjusted? Can you predict which direction pressure and volume will need to be adjusted to account for real gases? And can you estimate which molecules will require larger adjustments to the ideal gas law? I hope you can. Thank you.